This is part 141 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to prevent SQL injection when using Dynamic SQL. In our previous video, we have implemented this search page using Dynamic SQL. To build our Dynamic SQL statements, we have used parameters. This is an example of good Dynamic SQL implementation. This code, as it stands, is immune to SQL injection. In this video, let's look at an example of bad dynamic SQL implementations. I've seen many software developers, not just the beginners, but even experienced software developers, building their dynamic SQL statements by concatenating user input values instead of using parameters without realizing that they are opening doors for SQL injection. Let's rewrite this code to build our dynamic SQL statements by concatenating user input values and then see how it is prone to SQL injection. So let's make a copy of this line and then comment these three lines of code. So at the moment the query we have is select star from employees where 1 equals 1 and then if the user has provided a value within the first name text box we want to append you know this condition here and first name equals instead of using the parameter here I'm going to concatenate the value the user has provided in the first name text box directly to this string so let's retrieve the value from the text box and append it to this string which is going to you know include that AND condition for us. So here we are building our dynamic SQL statements by concatenating the user input value. And remember first name is an NVAR care column and we need to wrap that within single quotes. So the single quote begins here, we have the value from the text box and we need to end the single quote. And if the user has typed something into the last name, gender and salary columns, we need to add those as well. So let's do the same thing for those three columns as well. Comment these three conditions for last name, gender and salary. And let's build those three conditions by concatenating the user input values that the user has typed into those respective text boxes. One important thing to note here is that the salary column is an integer column so we don't have to wrap the salary column value within single quotes. So with these changes let's run the project by pressing Control F5 and see how it is prone to SQL injection. Let's also run a new SQL Server trace. I have the SQL Server profiler running already. Let's start a new trace and let's provide a value for first name. We have the marks record as expected. Now let's look at the query that's captured in SQL Server Profiler. Look at the query here. Select star from employees where 1 equals 1 and first name equals whatever value we typed in the first name text box. So here we are building our dynamic SQL statement by concatenating the values that the user has entered in the user input controls with this string. Now this is dangerous. It's very easy to inject SQL using this web page. Now, imagine what's going to happen if I type something like this. If I type a single quote, what is this going to do? This is going to close this single quote that we have opened. So at that point, the query is going to be select star from employees where one equals one and first name equals an empty string. And then after that, technically, I have any command that we want. For example, we can even have something like this. Drop database sales DB. Notice here we have got a database called sales DB and I'm trying to drop that by injecting this SQL here, drop database sales DB. Now, if we execute this as it is now, we are going to get an error because we have an unclosed single quote here but we can very easily comment that. Now look at this, when I click search button at this point, we get an error, unclosed quotation mark after the character string. Now what we can do is include the comment characters dash dash, so this is going to comment that unclosed quotation mark. So now when we execute this, 
look at that, the command completed. And if you look at what we have captured in SQL Server Profiler, look at the command here. Select star from employees, where one equals one, and first name equals an empty string. And then we have this command, drop database sales DB, and we have that single quote commented. And if you look at the object explorer here, sales DB is still present, but when we refresh the database folder, notice sales DB is gone. It's no longer there. The reason we are able to inject SQL here is because of the way we have implemented this dynamic SQL. We should never ever concatenate user input values to build our dynamic SQL statements. This is an example of bad dynamic SQL implementations. On the other hand, if we use parameters to build our dynamic SQL statements, we will not have this SQL injection problem. Let's actually prove that. Let's comment this line and uncomment these three lines right here. Similarly, let's comment these three if blocks where we are concatenating user input values to build our dynamic SQL statements. And let's uncomment these three if blocks where we are using parameters to build our dynamic SQL statements. Let's run the application one more time by pressing Control F5. In the first name text box, let's type mark and click search. Notice we get marks record as expected. Now let's see what's captured in SQL Profiler. Look at the command right here. Select star from employees where one equals one and first name equals at first name. And the value for this parameter is whatever value that we have typed in the first name text box. So anything that you type into this text box is now treated as a value for at first name parameter. So this makes our code immune to SQL injection. Let's actually prove that. First, let's go back to Object Explorer and let's create a new database. Let's call our database sales db. Click OK. So we have the sales db database created here. Now let's go back and inject the same SQL that we have injected earlier. Let's click search. Now first of all, notice we don't have any search results displayed. And let's look at SQL Server Profiler. Look at the command right here. Select star from employees where one equals one and first name equals at first name. And now the value for this at first name parameter is whatever we have typed in the text box. So this entire string is the value for first name parameter. And since we don't have any employee whose first name is this, the page displays no results. But the important thing to keep in mind here is that this command, drop database sales DB, is not executed. And as a result, we didn't lose our sales DB database. So if I refresh the databases folder, notice we still have the sales DB database. We also don't have this problem of SQL injection if we are using stored procedures. If you recollect, in one of our previous videos, we have implemented this page, search page without dynamic SQL. And this page is making use of this stored procedure, SP search employees. So let's navigate to that page. The name of the page is search page without dynamic SQL. And let's inject the same SQL. Let's click the search button. Notice we don't get any results. And let's look at the profiler. Look at the command right here. Execute SP search employees. It has got a parameter at first name. And the value for that parameter is whatever we have typed in the first name text box. And if you look at Object Explorer, we still have our sales DB. So when we refresh this, notice the sales DB is still there. But one important thing to keep in mind is that in your stored procedure, if you are creating dynamic SQL statements by concatenating user input values, then your stored procedure is still prone to SQL injection. If this is not clear at the moment, don't worry. We'll discuss an example of this in our next video. Finally, let's quickly recap what we have discussed so far. Dynamic SQL provides great flexibility when implementing complicated logic with a lot of permutations and combinations. Always use parameters to build your dynamic SQL statements, which prevents SQL injection. Never ever rely on concatenating user input values to build your dynamic SQL statements. It opens doors for SQL injection. 
Stored procedures are also prone to SQL injection. If you are building dynamic SQL statements inside stored procedures by concatenating user input values instead of using parameters. We'll discuss an example of this in our next video. Using parameters to build dynamic SQL statements not only prevents SQL injection but also increases performance by reusing the cached query plans. We'll discuss an example of this in a later video. And here we have the ADO.NET code where we have built our dynamic SQL statements by concatenating user input values that opened the doors for SQL injection. Thank you for listening and have a great day.